it's tough dating too, man. It's it's hard. My last girlfriend, she was she was cool, but she would have these moments where she would get so mad at me for being immature. Like I remember we were watching this movie, and out of nowhere she just paused the movie and like she turned to me all cute and she's like, "What's your biggest fear?" <laughs> I was like, oh, werewolves. You know, like that's... And I put the movie back on. You know, like... And she's like, no, no, like, what's your biggest fear, like, in life? And I was like... Yeah, like, werewolves. Like... And she's like, no, like, think. And I was like, I'm thinking. Gosh, like, I know they ain't real, but that would be scary, you know? The... They got those teeth, you know, and they're furry, and then also the claws, and then they walk upright. Like, how are you gonna defend that? <laughs> she's, she's like, oh my God, are you messing with me? I was like, no. Like, <laughs> I don't know why you're being cocky about this. She's, it's not like if a werewolf broke in, you'd be like, that's not scary, back to the movie. You'd be hiding behind me and shit. And I'd be like, how do I defend it? You know? And then she snapped, man. She started crying, which is unfair, girls. That's bullshit. You start crying, that makes you feel bad, even though they're wrong. That's not fair. She'll start some shit, and then she cries, and now I'm like, I'm so sorry. I didn't do shit, I'm apologizing, because that's not a fair tactic. But she snapped, man. She, she starts crying, and she's like, you know what a fucking fear is? You know what a fucking fear is, Jeff? Yes. I do. It's something you're fearful of. <laughs> my biggest fear is that I'm not spending enough time with my grandma and she's getting older every day and she's going to be gone soon and I'm down in LA doing all this fun stuff with you when I could be spending time with Graham Graham. That's a fucking fear, Jeff. That's a fucking fear. <laughs> Not as scared as a werewolf. <laughs> well, but it's just hard. I feel like dating is hard. It's hard to date in LA too because all the girls have had such grandiose relationships. You know, you'd be like, I'll be like, you know, do you like snowboarding? And like, oh yeah, like my last boyfriend, his like dad owned Burton snowboards. And so like, we would like take like a private helicopter to the top and we would like snowboard down. It was like so cool. I was like, oh, that's fucking, it's impressive. I don't think my dinner for two at Applebee's is gonna hold weight. You know? It's very tricky. Girls are, t girls are like, Girls, like my last girlfriend, she would always do this thing too. Like she'd watch like a Beyonce video and they'd just be like fluffed up for the next week. <laughs> Never had that. I know it'd be a rough week. The Beyonce video would come out and I'd be like, oh shit. It's not gonna be a good week. <laughs> and she's all up in my face. Like, when are you gonna put a ring on it, huh? <laughs> when are you gonna put a ring on it? So I went out and bought her a beautiful Nuva ring, right? <laughs> right? But nothing's ever good enough for Miss Pris, you know? Well, be more Pacific, that's what I say. I recently celebrated an anniversary. I am one year sober. Thank you, thank you. In early sobriety, they encourage you to be single because it's such a transformative time, which I love because I love being single. Um, the only person who doesn't like that is my husband. <laughs> Not a big fan. When you're a married woman and you quit drinking, in the beginning, everyone thinks you're pregnant. And they want you to drink to prove that you're not. So I was at my friend's wedding recently, and she was like, Brittany, you're totally pregnant. Drink this and prove that you're not. And I was like, Ugh. listen, Stacy, if I have to drink to prove it, I'm gonna fuck your dad. <laughs> Get that Mai Tai out of my face unless you want to call me mommy. <laughs> I did notice that when I quit drinking, my husband started collecting expensive whiskey. Thought that was a little annoying. 
So I was like, babe, how come when I quit drinking, you started collecting whiskey? And he was like, I have been trying to collect it the whole time. <laughs> Whoopsie. I am from Wisconsin, though. That's just what we do. We drink. You guys get it? We have t-shirts in our airport that say drink Wisconsinably. <laughs> My ex-stepmom used to decorate our house in tacky wine decor. She had a sign that said, wine is the answer, and I forgot the question. <laughs> the question is, why did the neighbor boy find you naked in a ditch at two o'clock on a Tuesday? <laughs> The question is, why is your cherry red spider eclipse parked in the kitchen? <laughs> These are the questions. Um, my first shot of hard liquor was Everclear. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, if you don't know what that is, congratulations. You have homework. Uh, it's 190 proof grain liquor. And that being your first shot is a lot like losing your virginity to a traffic cone. <laughs> Everything else is smooth sailing. <laughs> My signature move when I drank was I used to send nudes the way Bed Bath & Beyond sends coupons. <laughs> I'm like, if everyone in my phone gets 10, someone is bound to redeem. <laughs> my grandma was like, Brittany, what on earth is this? I'm like, it's a numbers game, grandma. Get on board. Whoa. And, I, and I used to look at guys, at role models, dudes were my role model who got girls. They were good at it. Meaning they got girls, it wasn't even an effort, you know? Like, if your name is Tony, girls could not... Th this is the sign where you're one of those dudes. Girls can't just go, hello. They got to sing your name. They have to, you know. Hi, Tony. Hi. And, you know, you know, and I'm sitting there like, damn. I just do Tony in high school. He'd get dates. He would get a date. I swear to you, I used to watch him like a hawk. He'd smack a girl in the back of the neck. Yeah. <laughs> Bap. And she'd be like, ouch, motherfucker. And look back and be like... Want to go to movies? <laughs> yeah. When? When? When you get paid. <laughs> and I used to be in the back watching them, looking. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's how you do. That's how you get girls. Smack them in the back of the fucking neck. <laughs> Because I used to do all type of shit. I was poetry, man. I used to you know, write poetry to get girls out, you know, and pictures, the pictures too. Like if I, you know, if I wrote, I, I cherish you, I would, I would draw a chair <laughs> plus ish, an, an eyeball. I draw an eyeball and a chair. And, uh, uh. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Oh, that's wonderful. Oh. But this new shit, I'm like, yeah, hey, girl, I'm back. Mm. But whatever he did, that wasn't my shit, you know? It didn't go like it. You, you ever watch the original Frankenstein? And uh, the little girl, he was playing with this little girl, and the little girl had a flower, and she threw in the water, and it floated. And Frankenstein just was like, hey. And he took her and threw her in the water, but she sunk. And he's just like, hey. He getting burned and shit with torches. That's me hitting girls in the back of the neck. I was anxious. And, and it just, you know, I always find a way to hit her in the part of the neck that makes her fall in a coma and smash her face open. Everybody's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm like, but here's something I'm willing to admit to you. I still read some romance novels. It's still happening. Occasionally read a romance novel. 
Yeah, there's some silence. Hey guys, uh, let me tell you something. People get on stage all over the world, comics do, and they talk about their love of porn and drugs, and audiences are like, interesting, interesting, fascinating. I get up, I admit that I occasionally read some poorly written prose, and there is some judgment. <laughs> sustaining the romance industry by myself up here, folks. It's not me. I do not make a billion dollars a year just to spend on books. So, uh, and it's no different than your creepy porn addiction. I will say that right now. I uh, do not watch porn because I was born one million years old. And every time I've tried to watch porn, I end up yelling at the television, you should call your mom. <laughs> just call her. She would love to hear from you. Just call her. It's very hard to get off on that. <laughs> I was telling a friend of mine that, and he said, that's the last time you tried to watch porn? It was on television? And I was like, yeah? Oh, yeah. Computers. <laughs> I've tried to watch three porns in my life. In my whole life, I've tried to watch three porns. I've never been able to make it through one. And my husband said to me, Jackie, no one's ever finished a porn. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, that resonates. <laughs> But it's true, I'm told that if you watch a lot of porns that sometimes they're terrible. Sometimes they're so bad they pull you out of the movie. The, the writing, uh, the acting, the lighting, it can be so distracting it can pull you right out of the movie. That is true too when you read your softcore porny novels. Sometimes they are so poorly written that they will pull you out of the book, off of the page. And you're like, is that even a sentence? What the fuck? And uh, Cause a lot, always gonna be two words, a lot. <laughs> But I'm also told you watch a lot of porns. Sometimes you can't unsee things, right? Am I right, huh, my porn watchers? You see something, you're like, oh, crummy. And uh, that is true too when you read your softcore porny novels. You can't unread something. 25 years ago, my friends, I read A Second Chance at Love Harlequin Romance, and the following three sentences have been burned in my brain ever since. Welcome home, she gasped as he entered her. Yeah, yeah. I recommend you try that, by the way. <laughs> Makes my husband laugh every time. Their sleeping bag became like a rocket ship and they came in synchronous apocalypse. <laughs> That's a hell of a ride, my friends. insane and I still I still read all the time that's what I do I travel I read I read I travel a couple of years ago I'm traveling I'm in New York City and I run out of books I run out of books pre-kindle pre-kindle and uh yeah I gotta have a book you guys I gotta stop the voices so uh I'm in New York and my friend says you could either borrow the Twilight series or the girl with the dragon tattoo series and I genuinely think to myself, well, maybe Twilight Sparkle vampires are scary. So I choose the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo series, which is a nightmare and is terrifying and should have been called the girl who was sexually tortured in the Swedish foster care program because then I would not have read it. Because it's scary, but it's pretty well written. So you start reading it and then all of a sudden it's five in the morning and you're like, she better live, she better live. And then you've read all three in a week and then you're mad at every guy in the world. <laughs> For like a month, you're mad until you realize who to be mad at, which is A, Stieg Larsson, author. B, all of Law & Order, SVU. All of it, all of it, all of it. I am single and ready to mingle with a man who has money, okay? Yeah, that's the biggest change that I've, I've decided to make. Yeah, thank you. I have dated men for so long for their personalities, and it's been fine. It's been fine, but I am, like, less interested in your sneaker collection and, like, more interested in a bed frame. You understand? Like, that's... Yeah, I'm really horny for bed frames. I, I'm like less interested in like a cool skateboard trick and like more interested in a 401k, right? I don't even really know what a 401k is, but I know I like it. I know it keeps me warm at night. You would be shocked at how many men don't have bed frames. <laughs> shocked. 
And sometimes you don't even realize it till the morning. <laughs> and you wake up and you're like, wait, is this a style choice? Is this like a Japanese minimalist thing? Like what? It's not. It's not. And you're like, let's just shut the lights off, right? And this whole experience. <laughs> I do, I want money so bad. <laughs> I want money so bad. I want it more than love. I want it so bad. I think about it all the time. I think, I think about, I spend a lot of my time thinking about what I would do with all the money in the world. Um, and I use visualization like in The Secret. And yeah, thank you so much. It's my financial plan. Uh, <laughs> If you don't know what visualization is, it's taking your, your, your heart's biggest desire, bringing it up into your mind's eye and living it like it's your absolute truth right now. Um, we can actually all awaken our third eyes together uh, as a group, it'll be fun. So everybody close your eyes. Susan, close your eyes. If you don't close your eyes, I can see, mom. Close your eyes, if I, I can see if your eyes aren't closed. Sir, okay, thank you so much. Okay, so then you take your two fingers on your right hand and you put them in between your eyebrows. Great, you're, wow, you guys are thriving. So then you take your heart's deepest desire, your, 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 your biggest secret, your biggest wish, and then you rub your fingers in a clockwork motion, okay, to awaken your third eye, and then that is also how you make a nice lady come. You gotta get married, right? That's what you do? Ugh. <laughs> Scary, huh? Marriage feels so antiquated. Feels like we've come so far with everything. We're still doing that thing? What are we doing? Especially uh, the ladies. Every girl I've ever dated is like, when are you going to propose? Clock's ticking. Pop the question. Why do you want to get married so bad? What is it? Ladies, you come so far. But when it comes to marriage, you guys get kind of old-fashioned. I want the ring and the cake and the dress. What? Grow up. <laughs> <laughs> ladies, you're killing it. Go frolic. Be free. But it's my special day. All right. Why do you have to ruin mine? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like a lot of guys look at marriage the way women look at anal. You know, we're both just like, well, we all knew this day was coming. <laughs> Let's get it over with. I'm not sure it's even natural. Right? <laughs> Either way, when it's all done, we'll get new sheets. <laughs> but that's why you ladies are brilliant. You gals are geniuses, because you guys tend to be the ones who want to get married to somebody who designed it to where the man asks you. That's some Jedi-level trickery right there. You're like Yoda. I want to get married, but you'll ask me. Yes, you got it. And you'll get down on one knee. No problem. And you'll buy me an expensive ring. Will do. And whose idea was this? All mine. <laughs> well played, ladies. Well played. See, like, guys, we got to cool with the sexual aggression. We come on too strong. We're creepy. We're scary. Ladies, you guys got to cool with the commitment aggression. That's where you guys push. That's where you guys get creepy. When you exchange key, when you going to move in, when you get married, it's like, well, hey, no means no. <laughs> <laughs> Slow down. I feel pressured. I'm not ready. Huh? And your family jumps in. Hey, when are you going to make an honest woman out of my daughter? What? Who's this guy? <laughs> Imagine my dad did that. Hey, when are you going to bang my son? Huh? <laughs> Back off. I don't know. My nuts. Marriage just feels like the least romantic thing on the planet. It's legal. You got to go to a courthouse, get a license. What's the license for? That's the only license we don't check, by the way. Driver's license, liquor license. People check a fishing license. I'm going to start checking marriage license. <laughs> Next time I see a short, broke, weird guy, like, that's my hot wife over there. I'll be like, let me see some ID. <laughs> <laughs> I don't buy it. I just got my license renewed. You know what's weird? When you buy alcohol, you show your driver's license. Isn't that weird? The thing I'm not supposed to do with this stuff, you want me to prove I can do? Huh. By that logic, when you buy a gun, you should show your marriage license. <laughs> right? Lady walks in, I'll take that revolver. Guy's like, let me see some identification. Well, you've been married 60 years. You know what? Just take it. <laughs> my wife and I met in college. Morgan State University. <laughs> All right. Met in college, we have been married for almost 10, together for 20. But, if you count the amount of times we broke up, it'd be three months on Tuesday. <laughs> y'all keep us in y'all prayers, thank y'all. We started out as friends. When I met her at college, we were friends. 
Homeboy and homegirl. Miss G, you know, right? We used to race around campus. I was dating other girls. She's dating guys. We telling each other about one another. Sister and brother, we just cool. And one day we was hanging out, and a titty came out. <laughs> And we've been together ever since. <laughs> oh my God, this, my family looks mortified. <laughs> Quans are gonna be awkward as a motherfucker. <laughs> I heard what you said about my daughter up there. I heard what you said. Come on down to the basement, let's wrestle. My baby though, man, we've been together a lot, we've been through a lot. When you got kids and you marry, it's tough sometimes, you know, keep the romance going and stuff. My wife, one day, she brought home some satin sheets. She was like, these are gonna feel nice on the bed, these satin sheets. We are gonna try, I'm not sure if anybody here got satin sheets. Let me tell you something, they are dangerous as hell. Put them satin sheets on the bed, went and took a shower, got out the shower, put on some shea butter. <laughs> some cocoa butters, almond butters, Lando Lakes, all types of butters. <laughs> went and got up in that bed, lay down, feeling good, stretch my legs, don't even crack your toes and your knees. <laughs> feeling good, I'm in the bed, sneezed and flew the fuck out the bed. Don't you put no satin sheets on your bed. You gotta put a bath mat under your back. Give your, give your ass something to hold you in there. Shit threw me 25 feet across the room.